I saw online last week you did the Chevy Chase thing at the Apollo. Did you enjoy doing that? I know it, it again is one of these things where it became a story in its own right. I've never heard such brilliant reviews in my life. People had a hoot, although it was somewhat uncomfortable. How did you feel? It was interesting. I've done the, I did Al Pacino for the same promoter, and I did uh, Sylvester Stallone. Uh, they were great, absolutely fantastic. You know, went out to eat afterwards. And Chevy and his wife were delightful. I met them beforehand, mm. and you know, he didn't want to know the questions, which I'm the same. I never know one of those questions. And he was delightful, absolutely charming. Somebody said to me, "Is he, is he okay?" And I said, "I think so." And on stage, the sound was such was bizarre. The sound was bizarre. We couldn't hear each other. And afterwards, he said, I was trying to lip. I said, so was I. I said, I couldn't wow. quite hear responses. He said, I couldn't really hear your questions. I said, the sound check in the afternoon was brilliant. The sound in the evening was absolute rubbish. But that said, um, afterwards, he and his wife said, oh, that was one of the loveliest interviews. They said, and you don't use notes. Everybody uses notes. Uh, he said, you don't. He said, that's fantastic. He said, you knew everything about my career. You don't use notes. Brilliant. And we talked about the films. We talked about his um, vacation films. We talked about the Fletch films. We talked about Three Amigos. We sang a little bit of the song from the Three Amigos together <laughs> yes. with guitar. Um, we, we, um, we talked, I talked about his genealogy. He had two ancestors that went over on the Mayflower. He had two former, uh, two former mayors of New York in the 60s, 1700s where his um, his ancestors. I said, and through one of the guys on the Mayflower, I said, he's connected to, he's a relative of Nelson Rockefeller, Longfellow, John Foster Dulles, and Bing Crosby. I mean, it's amazing. So uh, I just did a stuff. Um, but he was a strange bloke. He's definitely a strange interviewee. He's the weirdest one I've interviewed because he's look at you blankly and he forget in the middle of what he was saying. You know, somebody said, yeah, is he okay? He just kept stopping. Mm. And I had to remind him that he went, oh, yeah, okay. Um, but the, the strongest thing was that he insisted on somebody from the audience asking him three questions. Right. You know, um, and it was, one well, of the three questions were, could you tell me about your wives, your hemorrhoids, and shooting up, not drugs, shooting up. Are you sure? And well, the promoter said, that's what he wants. He's insistent. It's almost a rider. This is, this is carved in stone. Okay, so they got somebody from the crew to sit in the front row, and they said, he definitely, definitely, definitely wants this to happen. Like, okay, fine. So the guy said, All right, okay, I've got three questions, wives, hemorrhoids, and shooting up. Said, yeah, right, okay. So uh, uh, I said, this is weird, because we're not asking anybody else in the audience, only this one person. Anyway, I said, I think someone in the audience has got a, got a couple of questions for you, Chevy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you tell me about, he stood up, could you tell me about your wives, your hemorrhoids and shooting up. <laughs> he hung him out to dry. He said something like, why don't you sit down? And uh, everyone went, and I had to dig myself out of a really big hole. Uh, a really big okay. hole. So he was almost he trying to be too stuff. clever for his own good. Yeah, I mean, he's, mm. he, he does like to make the interview of the fall guy. But yeah. that's, that's too easy to do. It's a cheap trick. Right. You know? We can all do it. It's, I mean, you ask me a question, I blank you. You ask me another, I go, I don't want to talk about that. Yet. I, I, you, know, you can make it really tricky if you want to, mm. or you can carry on. I think sometimes, in a way, you feel that maybe it's the person's own insecurity that's making you behave like that. Right. I mean, he is known as being tricky. You must have been slightly cautious going in. A, he doesn't do interviews, and B, the ones he does do, he's, re he's a reluctant guest, put it that way. Oh, yeah, he did two TVs to promote it. And both of them were, 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 were slight car crashes. He was on long enough, it could be a major car crash, but he was obviously uncomfortable, based uncomfortable, and the thing didn't work at all. And I thought, well, at least I get on with him, and he's fine. And afterwards, he said, I really loved that. He said, that was the best interview I've done. Wow. Said, oh, okay, fine. You know, the audience were laughing, they were clapping. And, and I had things where, where somebody said, oh, Mike Reese really stormed off the stage and Chevy smashed his microphone on the floor. Well, the answer was, I let him take the applause. Of course. You know, I said, ladies and gentlemen, Chevy Chase, I'm not going to stand there today. It's his gig. I, I'm going to let him take the applause. And in applauding back, he threw his microphone on the sofa and it bounced off and bounced onto the floor. I actually saw the, the video of that and that is exactly what happened. He didn't throw his mic on yeah, the floor. You're quite I, right. I stormed off. 
and he smashed his microphone on the floor and you mm. think oh come on makes but a nice anyway, headline I suppose I mean, th- yeah it, it's exactly and it's um, you know and there's more these days there's just as much in infamy as 